formal and free form where people didn't feel intimidated by the process of contributing, but also organized because we wanted it to somehow just display And so we, we kind of thought about this and we had all these weird ideas um, and we tried it a few different things. And like these were some of the original archive notes that we found uh, where we talked about this like idea of a neighborhood wiki. Um, and we, we sort of only knew what was already out there. So we thought about the live journal community that was there and thought about um, this, this popular, like, it was like a dating website. It was really popular in Davis and how these, how these affected the community and how we wanted that same process to, to happen. And so what we did was we, um, we were just playing around and I found, uh, for whatever reason, I had a friend that was living in Berkeley who had started experimenting with a wiki, which is this open source software. Um, and a wiki, it, most people think of Wikipedia, but it's a general term that means that a website that you can go in and edit. Uh, and at the time, it was very different than anything else. Now people use things like Google Documents, uh, where they can edit on their, in their browser, which is very new. But at the time, it was, it was a very, very innovative idea, a very foreign idea that you could edit a website. And so we found this open source wiki software, and it was totally horrible. And this is actually what it looked like. This was it running on my laptop, uh, my personal laptop, my personal laptop. And I just, you know, I set it up because I was like, I just want to play with this and see if we can just start putting the, what, we, what we know about Davis in this page. And so there was just like a little bit of information. You can see it, 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 there's a link, maybe you can't see it, to Davis map. We wanted to map something about campus buildings um, and then a little introduction. Uh, and we were like, you know, this is unworkable. This doesn't look appealing. Uh, this is really difficult to use but maybe we can just start putting stuff on it and then fix it as we go. And so we started modifying this open source software uh, and we spent a lot of time making it look better and trying to figure out ways we could make it easier to use. Despite the fact this was 2004, so th this was like, there were a lot less options for making things easy to use. And so we, we also spent a little time making it a little bit faster because we, we wanted people to be able to actually access this thing frequently and what was out there was really, really slow at the time. And so what we did was after we had kind of come up with a theme that looked appealing and a couple of little things that made it a little bit easier to use, um, we started printing out, like we, we started sending out um, invitations to our friends. And we started with like 30 of my friends. Um, and I told them, you know, come to this Davis Wiki website it's got a password on it because we don't want anyone to see it because it's so bad. Uh, but then just you know, come in and, and add whatever you know, anything you want. And out of those 30 people, like like two of them did something. Um, and but it was fine because we were like, this is this is what we want. We just want a thing where we can add stuff about what we know about this community, and no one else really contributes. So that's fine because at least we've done our part. And then in you know three years we graduate, it'll still be there. Someone can can find this useful, hopefully. And so we put these little flyers out around town. Um, when, when we were still just starting, we had only had about 150 pages on the project. It was really crummy. And we said, you know, look, this is cool. This is this grassroots nonprofit thing. You should check it out if this sounds interesting. One of the first things we did was um, someone, the first major contributor we had that wasn't someone that we knew was this kid, Graham Colbeans. And um, he, he was really into this project that was old school web called the Payfund Project, where they wanted to take pictures of all the payfunds around the world because they knew that they were going to disappear because it was right when cell phones started like really taking off. And so we were like, oh, cool, like, you know, that'd be cool to do in Davis. And this kid just went around, and I think I actually took these particular pictures, but he went around and took pictures of almost every single payphone and just added a little bit about it, even though it's like not that interesting. Some of them um, had little stories about them uh, and information about whether or not you could call the phone. And what's really great is now all the payphones are gone and we have pages about them, which is kind of cool. Uh, and so we had this password on the site. We removed it after we had about, let's see, 300 pages. And we had had 30 people that had bothered to make an account. That doesn't mean that they actually did much of anything. Uh, and then two weeks later, after we opened it up and we had this launch, which meant that we publicized it on all the communication channels out there, um, we had 100 users, which just people had signed up, and 600 pages. 
Um, most of those pages were pages that people just made about themselves because they thought it was cool that you know, they could make a page. Um, and so this is just a graph of the page growth over time. And you can actually see it's not like exponential growth or anything. It was pretty steady, linear, um, linear growth. And so now we're at like around 17,000 pages on Davis Wiki. And within one year, there were 6,000 pages. Um, and so that's, it was a, a pretty, pretty impressive continual growth. And the, there were a set of people that, like this grandfellow who made these pages about the pay funds, who kind of emerged relatively quickly. And um, we found that they spent a lot of time on the website looking at what was happening. So one of the things I, I didn't quite explain is that, so anyone can edit these pages in the community, and there are administrators that could lock the pages and, and resolve disputes and, and all of that stuff. But generally anyone can edit. And so there's a stream that you can view, and that's called recent changes, to see what has changed. And then people look at this stream and review things. And so there were a lot of people that that became a way for them to kind of actually figure out what was going on in the community or, or just review things. And there were people that spent hours doing this every single day and still do. And so when someone signs up, um, it's a very friendly community, very personal community. So someone will sign up and someone says, hey, welcome to the wiki. Um, I noticed you're a business owner. I, you, know, you posted something really promotional about your business. Here's a link to a page that we made about how, as a business owner, you can use Davis Wiki. Um, so right now, Davis Wiki has 17, around 17,000 pages, uh, around 20,000 photos. And it has 17,000, around 17,000 users in the community of 60,000 people. So this, this is actually like an incredible amount of people that contribute. So the figure is like around one in seven, we could say hypothetically, that live there have added to Davis Wiki. Uh, and then the visiting stats are, are even higher. In a day, one in six people that live in Davis visit Davis Wiki. Uh, and in a month, basically every single person that lives in Davis actually interacts with the Davis Wiki in some form. And um, it was difficult, it, it's difficult when you don't live there to understand this. And so we've in the past actually went out and filmed people on the street just sort of randomly to prove that like actually, you know, you can walk around and ask every single person you see on the street and they know about this. Uh, and people feel a real strong sense of connection with the site uh, because it's actually something that they've built. It's a project that they've built as a community. It's not something that was provided to them. Um, but so all of those statistics seem really cool, but the, the reality is that it took a long time. So if you go back to this graph here, I mean, even, even at that 6,000 page point at one year, um, we had this tagline, and I don't have a picture of it, uh, that Davis Wiki was the definitive resource of Davis, California. And we put that up because we were joking. We thought it was hilarious that anyone would think that this, this site that had information about like, cows and, 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 you know, a tunnel and how we thought like that you know windows like that would be good for an archer and we took a picture of a building like this and you know and it was just like whatever we thought was interesting um, and so it it took a long time um, and it wasn't just because we didn't take it seriously I, I think it was important that we didn't take it seriously uh, but it took a long time to be recognized as something that was a media source in the community as opposed to just a, a project that some students had been doing uh, and then. So this was actually, I think this was like, I, I have orange hair in this picture. Um, this was like, I think three years ago, um, and we recognized, uh, we got this community engagement award from the city council of Davis, which was important because the previous years it had been given to the community radio station and the community television station, uh, because those were traditionally the institutions that engaged the community. And so we thought this was kind of the point where we could say, okay, like this has cemented itself as a media source in the community, uh, not just a cool, a cool website. Um, and so the Davis Wiki project uh, is used for, there's basically two things that people use it for. Um, and those two things are, are sometimes related, sometimes not. And the first thing is sort of like an ad hoc resource. So anyone could come onto this website and add anything they want about anything. And generally speaking, unless it's you know bogus, it, it'll stick around. People might contribute, and so people do things that I would have never thought of. And as someone who's a programmer and a geek, I would have said that's a horrible idea. This is the wrong system to use, right? 
But the flexibility and, and crumminess actually is useful because it's just there. And so, for instance, people made a page called Lost Pets. And this is just incredible to me. And every single day, almost every single day, the page is made like 10,000 times. Every single day, someone comes on and adds a new pet that was lost or found. And um, I actually, I found like a bunny one time and I looked on the site and it was there. And like, it, it's, it's really weird. So stuff like this, or um, someone made a page called the Bicycle Recovery System, because Davis is a, is a huge bicycle town and people get their bikes stolen all the time. And so uh, people post their bikes on here. I posted a bike on here and someone found my bike and returned it to me. But it was also because like, they knew that I was like the guy that started this site and they were like, don't screw with him, he's still this guy's bike. <laughs> so like, but this, this is interesting. And these sorts of things are not possible early on, where they're not useful. If you started a local wiki and you were like, I'm gonna put all the lost pets on here, no one cares because it doesn't have the distributive effect of being that main resource for the community. Um, and another great example is in Davis, there was this con artist that would hang out at the train station and tell people she needed an Amtrak ticket because she had an abusive boyfriend. She did this for several months and eventually someone was like, you know, that person is really, I, I, don't, I don't believe this. And they had made a page called Con Artists and said, does anyone know what the deal is with the, the woman at the train station? And then eventually people started adding more and more information like, yeah, I, I was, you know, I saw her. Yeah, huh, that's weird. Yeah, I heard her name was Jill. Yeah, her name was Jill. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, her brother is, uh, yeah, he's actually got a bench board out for his arrest for failure to appear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And eventually, like, the people figured out, and it's actually in some ways kind of terrifying to me because I think that I don't think we should become a surveillance society. But uh, the, the people in Davis used the Davis Wiki to solve a problem in their community with this con artist woman that just like it wouldn't have been possible to coordinate this the same way, even on Facebook, because there's like, it, it's not little tidbits, people were actually able to piece it all together. And so this actually, the New York Times picked up the story of this con artist getting caught through Davis Wiki, which is pretty cool. Um, the other main use, and I think is the more important use early on with a project like this, is institutional memory. The reason why we made it, basically, that things are changing in the community all the time, there's history there already. There are things that are that you think are interesting that are going to become history. And when you record those, you can get more value out of them just by having them there for a long enough period of time. And also because the wiki links things together. Um, and so an example is uh, someone had talked about this abandoned house that was way out. The University of Davis owns like an insane amount of land. And there was this house way out in the middle of nowhere that was supposedly haunted and that they had done weird experiments with animals and stuff. So like, someone had, had basically made this page and people started taking pictures of it. And, um, and then I think either because of the Davis Wiki or just sort of because, they burnt it down intentionally so that people would stop going out there a couple of years later. And now that's always there, right? There's always, you can always find out about this Baxter House place. Um, and, you know, 30 years from now, you can think back, oh, when I was in college, I remember going to a, a party at an abandoned house, and you can find this page on there. And another example is like uh, downtown Davis, there is this weird pyramid looking thing uh, that people started taking pictures of. And then like a couple of years later, it was actually moved. Uh, they removed it and added a coffee shop in there. And these are not like isolated examples. This is the way that communities work. Um, and so these two uses blend sometimes. And a great example is the uh, pepper spraying incident that happened at UC Davis. So um, this guy, Sergeant John Pike, pepper sprayed all these sitting student protesters and um, it was all over the news, all over the national media. And the people on Davis Wiki started recording this kind of in real time and it provided an outlet to make sort of a contextual amount of information about this that was updated all the time. So people would post a blog post. Uh, someone would, would write about how they, uh, you know, they, they, you know, heard that their mouths were held open and pepper spray was sprayed down their throat and how horrible that was. And then on here, someone could say, well, oh, that didn't happen because we watched all the videos and this letter that was circulating. And so you could go, if you weren't following the story, and read this page at any moment and get the best view of the situation rather than reading the, the stream of stories that were coming out at the time. And so this, this means that people could use it 
like because it was popular, the ad hoc thing, you could get information out. But also, it, it provides the best snapshot, uh, the best source of information about what had happened. And this page is interlinked with information about the quad, the area where this incident happened, uh, the information about the uh, police department head that had already had a page about her, the chancellor controversy about her, the fact that when she was in Greece, there was this Athens uh, student revolution that happened where the police had shot some of the students or something, something like this that was all on there. And so people could kind of pull all this information together in a way that you wouldn't normally get if, if this was on like a news website. So the question is, what does this mean? Uh, and what does this mean for other communities? So the, the one thing I think that's really important is the idea of mass collaboration, the idea of having hundreds of thousands of people in a community working together on a project um, changes the way that the media works. Um, and the, this connection between the community owning the project, um, not ownership in a share sense, but in they feel attached to it in this collaborative process, means that we sort of have invented, I think, or, or are discovering a type of media that's very new, that's different from blogs. And blogs and are very much like news, like traditional newspaper articles. They're very short, they provide updates. Um, and that there is a process in communities where basically the, the process of contributing to Davis Wiki for people who live in Davis engages them in their community. They learn things about the community. Um, and they, through that process, create lasting information. So the great, you know, Davis Wiki is really cool, but the problem is there are lots of barriers for other projects to start over the years. And so one barrier is basically technical. So the software that's out there, um, the open source software that's out there, is really difficult. Davis Wiki itself was really difficult to use. Um, and the, you, you, with Davis, you're dealing with an extremely technically literate population. I think the second most educated city uh, in the United States, second to Cambridge. And they were maybe able to take on that burden. And now that it's so big, are willing to put up with the, the issues with the, the older, complicated software because it's so valuable. Um, and the other, the other problem that we saw from a technical perspective was that this was not designed for a local community. There was no intrinsic geographic component. There were lots of, the wrong sorts of things were being emphasized. And the other side was that there were tremendous organizational barriers for other projects. Um, organizing in a community is difficult. Uh, there were no examples for people to follow. People look at Davis Wiki and say, wow, 17,000 pages, 17,000 users, all of this stuff, how would I ever do that? I would have to sit down for years and just bang things out. Um, and it's so hard to see how to get to a successful project from nothing. And there was no network of projects to draw experience from and learn from. And so this is what we're changing with the local wiki project. And so as was mentioned, we got a grant from the Knight Foundation to create software to make a new local wiki software, which is what we've been working on. Um, and our sort of general purpose mission is to become the open source, open content uh, effort to share the world's local knowledge. So Wikipedia shares sort of the sum of the knowledge of the world in an open way that's open source. And we want to do that for local knowledge. But it's a very different kind of project. Um, and so one of the things that's different about local wiki is that it's distributed. It's geographically distributed. And it's also technically distributed in certain ways. Um, with local wiki, there's essentially two main components. There's the software component, which is what we got a grant for and have been working on. And then there's an outreach component and an education component. And so when we were able to start looking at what we wanted from a technical perspective with a, the local wiki software, we started thinking about what the most important things would be. And with that one in seven number, of Davis residents contributing. We said, you know, we don't want, Wikipedia, it's 0.001% of people who visit Wikipedia ever try to contribute to Wikipedia. And we, you know, if, if that was true in Davis, it would work out to like 10 people or something would actually contribute. Um, and so we wanted to aim for that high level of contribution, especially in communities that were not as technically literate. So ease of use was our number one priority when we developed the new local Wiki software. 
which is difficult because we had to figure a bunch of stuff out that hadn't been done in the open source world. Um, the other thing was we wanted to be locally oriented, um, mainly geographic as the first sort of component that, that is really, really local. And we also wanted to take advantage of today's technology. What else was out there was just really, really old. Um, so I'm going to kind of just give a little brief tour of, of the, the way that things work. Local wiki centers are around the idea of a page, and a page can be about anything. So here's a page on trianglewiki.org about the Raleigh City Council. Uh, and it's just basically like um, any, any noun, essentially, in your community could have a page. And anyone can edit any of these pages and add what they know. So you just press this edit button up at the top, and then you can just start typing whatever it is you want into this editor. And so we, we focused on making this process very easy to use. Um, the editing process is the, the easiest of any of these, these open source software uh, projects that are out there. The other main thing that we focused on was mapping. So you can have pages, but all of the pages can have maps if you want them to have maps. And so here's a page on sfwiki.org about Golden Gate Park. And so there's this, this cool map there. Um, and that's not something that was automatic. That was something that you, know, you can just draw in there. So people can draw in, uh, and I'll show some examples of their own neighborhood boundaries, which are not, it's not like you can look them up in a database. Sometimes you can. Uh, you can draw in you know, your routes, favorite you know, trails, and that sort of thing. Uh, and also just points for locations. And the map itself is something you edit, just like a page. Uh, and so here, it's a little hard to see what's going on without seeing it happen. I can click on the map and then click edit, and then I can go in and sort of reshape uh, the area and then just save it. These pages that are out there connect basically through links is the primary way that they connect to each other. So here, we have links throughout the pages that, that connect to other pages. And because anyone can edit these pages, the first question most people have is, well, how do I know, you know when something is, you know, someone added something bogus? And it's really important because there's people that watch this and want to see what has happened. And so we spent a lot of time making it a, a visual process to see what was changed on the page, uh, which didn't exist. So we had to figure out how to do this in a visual way. So the things in green here are things that have been added to the page. The things in, in red on the left are things that have been removed. Uh, and then we have a little thing that you kind of scroll through to see what was changed. And it's, it's also true for maps. We built um, the first, as far as I know, geographic uh, way to view differences uh, so that people can argue about what, what the boundaries of Chrissy Field are. And so one of the things people ask us is, you know, like, okay, well, this is cool, but why is this local? Like, why isn't this just a thing that anyone can use? Uh, and so anyone can use this for any purpose they want. It's open source software. But because we have a particular mission uh, to focus on local communities and local usage, that means we can do things that other generic things could never do. So one good example is you can tag a page, uh, similar to how you might label something in Gmail or tag something on Flickr. Uh, and so all of the pages on the SF Wiki uh, that are tagged with neighborhood when you click on the tag, this is the page that comes up that shows all these tagged pages. But we also have a map that displays that shows, it pulls in all the geographic information. So we have eventually, it not, is obviously not quite comprehensive yet, we'll have a map of all the neighborhoods and it's very automatic. Um, similarly, this is a map of all the schools. It's hard to see because um, we need to make them turn into dots when they're small, we haven't done that yet. Of all the schools in the research triangle area. Um, and so there's hundreds of them, and whenever you add one, you just add the tag, and then it'll show up in the map. And so there's a lot of other things like this that we're going to do that you just couldn't do unless you had a particular focus on local communities. Um, so when we first did this project for the first six months or so, we targeted open source developers. We were hoping that people would 
find this interesting, the work interesting, and, and like install it and play with it and customize it and send us back their open source contributions. Um, but what we actually found out was that no one cares. Um, and the, the reason why they don't care is because it doesn't affect them and their community. Um, once someone is running something, once I have a program on my computer um, and it's broken or I want to fix something, then I care. So once I have a local wiki project in my community, uh, once I'm trying to start something and there's something wrong or I want to customize something, then I care. So what we realized was this approach we had of focusing on open source developers uh, was just, it was pointless. There was no reason to do it initially. And so what we did was we made the software uh, easier to install and focused on that to try and get people to just install it and then to see if that would increase open source contributions. Um, and you still need to be a nerd to do this part. So it's, it's not, not quite there yet. Um, and so what we saw was this actually worked, the focus on making it easy to install and putting it in front and center. If you go to locally.org, it basically looks like a software website. And that's intentional. We're going to change it in a few months when there's more stuff out there to, to refocus it around communities. Uh, and so this is actually an old graph, but we have, you know, it's probably more than this, but 182 at the time. This was a month, of, two months ago, I made this graph. Uh, people had installed the software, uh, which for server software you install on a server is very good, uh, especially since this is focused just on local communities. Um, and so we're starting to see these open source contributions come in, which is what we wanted. Uh, an example here, this looks like <coughs> the other pages I showed, but this is actually in Portugal, uh, Portuguese rather, um, and some people in Portugal, in Porto, uh, wanted to make a local wiki, and they were programmers, and so they set it up, and then they went through, and they didn't just translate, it's not like we had a translation mechanism, they contributed like 10,000 lines of code to add all the machinery that would allow it to be translated into other languages, sent that to us as an open source contribution, and then trans translated everything into Portuguese. Um, and then because of that, we were able to get someone who's in Switzerland, who is trying to start a, uh, a local wiki in Germany, uh, to translate into German. Uh, where we have a Spanish translation, and a, uh, some people are working on a, on a Bengali translation now, too. Um, there's some people in Olympia, Washington, who um, set up, wanted to start an Olympia, uh, oliwiki.org site, and uh, the guy that, that had sort of spearheaded it teaches a web design class at a community college, and so he had learned about this Twitter bootstrap thing, and so he integrated this, this new skin, which is totally radically different, and it works really well on phones, uh, and had also begun to work on a, uh, a mobile skin for local wiki, so it works well on the normal skin that works well on phones. So we started to see those contributions and that the open source element paying off and, and producing returns for everyone. Um, aside from the software, when we first started this project, we had this idea of focus communities, that we would pick particular communities and focus on them and help them start projects, because we didn't want people to think Davis Wiki is the only project that's out there. So the first goal we had was to test this new software we were building. Uh, and that's pretty much what we did for the first six months with a couple of communities. Uh, the second goal was to just build these examples uh, that, to prove that this concept could be replicated and to also help these projects eventually begin to replicate themselves. Because we saw all of the projects that were out there, there's similar projects in Rochester, Santa Cruz, Sacramento, uh, that had all been started by people that used to live in Davis or new people that lived in Davis. And so our idea was if we start strong projects or help start strong projects, um, it would be better to just start a few that are good and then they can spread sort of naturally. So our first focus community, this is sort of sized incorrectly, uh, was Denton, Texas. And uh, it seems really weird because probably no one here has heard of Denton, Texas. Um, we have. Okay, good. So it's, it's in Texas, near Dallas. Um, and so they are, um, so, so this is just a page from, from the Denton Wiki project about Occupy Denton, uh, which was an interesting event. Um, and they had like a page about this bubble van that 
drives around and shoots bubbles everywhere downtown. And this guy sells like incense and herbs and stuff out of the van. Um, a page about so there's there's a, a few neighborhoods. I went to Denton and I, I saw actually how comprehensive this thing was. It was impossible for me to understand looking at it. I thought there's not enough stuff in this thing. But actually, I went there. It's like you know, at someone that lives in San Francisco, there's not a whole lot in Denton, and this thing has a lot on it. Uh, so this is one of the main drags, basically Fry Street. So this this guy who's been living there for 11 years kind of was like, this is exactly what Fry Street is. He drew it, and then has this whole history of Fry Street uh, and history of you know a bunch of buildings that were intentionally burnt down, and then they're rebuilding them, and this development controversy and all of this. Um, so the, their progress has been um, reasonably good. So they have kind of gone with the slow and steady approach. Uh, they've been working on the project for a long time, and just kind of occasionally added material over time. The two jumps in this graph of page content um, were the first jump was essentially when we had uh, imported them. They had started a project on a legacy system. We imported them. And I think it created a bunch of pages and they got really excited. And then the second spike was when I went there and I was like, all right, guys, we're going to do this every single day while I'm here. Uh, so I got a bunch of people to work on it a bunch. Uh, and then we had launched the site at that point. Uh, it's hard to explain. It's basically the sum of all pages content. Like all the words, add them together. That's pretty much what you get. So it's kind of an aggregate of, of how much stuff is there. The demographics of Denton are somewhat similar to Davis. Um, it's a college community. Um, it's relatively isolated. Um, so it was, it was a safe bet for us because we were like, the, the people we thought to identify uh, to help it was like two students started this. They had all this free time to work on this project. And we thought, this is great. These are exactly the kind of people we need to do this. Um, they didn't have strong ties to the community at large. Um, one of them ended up moving out of Denton uh, to do the Peace Corps. Uh, and the other one is still there, but doesn't, doesn't know a lot of people in the community. He's just really in the Denton wiki. So we thought that, that was important because we thought this content building part was really important. Second focus community to launch was uh, for Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. Um, and in the background here, there's a picture of a, uh, a day that they had a big edit party where they had 50 or 60 people come out uh, to this space and spend all day taking pictures and adding things to Triangle Wiki. So these people really well connected in the community. Uh, so they started uh, recording things about uh, historic places in Cary, uh, which is an area in the Triangle. Um, they started, there was a, a person who had a blog about greenways and parks that he'd been maintaining. And what he found was that no one read his blog, or that when they did, it was just you know only a few people, and it didn't have any context, it didn't help anyone really. So he thought, well, I'll just start dumping all this stuff on here, because this is useful. Other people can update this. Uh, and so all, I think almost all the greenways in the Raleigh area have been documented. Um, another thing they focused on was recording this new public transit project, uh, free downtown public transit. And like here's another example of, uh, they used the mapping, uh, they're using the maps to essentially record where you can find free food. So their progress has been a little bit different than Denton Wiki. So they've had a much <laughs> different curve in the graph. So the, the people we were working with in Triangle are not students. Uh, it's the student-heavy community, but they are all 30 plus years old, have families, uh, very civically engaged, go to meetings and, and this sort of thing. And so we talked to them for a while, and they had a lot of meetings and talked about a lot of stuff. And the people we were talking to were not adding things to Triangle Wiki. And we said, you know, this is great, but you know, you have to get to the point where you can send this out to everyone and publicize it. And there's enough interesting material where someone's going to want to come back and understand this. So you have to actually get someone to start adding stuff to this that's interesting and unique. And it took a long time, but eventually we got them to this point where they started adding stuff. And they had this big day where they had, you know, 60 people come out, which is what that big spike is. And we set particular goals for them, milestones, page-wise, 
uh, community-wise, and they sort of slowly, we were able to manage their expectations uh, so that the volunteers that were involved didn't get burnt out or feel like they were working on an effort that was going to fail. And I kind of talked about the demographics here a little bit. Uh, but what we learned from that was that the community organizing types that we had initially uh, assumed were not the right people to work with uh, actually are the right people to work with. But what you need is you also need the sort of Mountain Dew, hardcore, crazy people that are going to be on there like adding a bunch of stuff. And so you need to be able to kind of have both, both ends. So we've been helping in a lot of other places, uh, either indirectly or directly. Uh, here's a map from uh, about two months ago, just showing the United States projects. Uh, they're out there. Right now, our focus has shifted to being about communities uh, and not so much about technology. Because uh, we don't think that anything we do from here on out, technology-wise, is going to impress anyone or really help anyone as much as just helping start new projects and make projects more successful. So the question is now, what, what do we do where we are? And what's next? And what do we wish that we could do? And what's deficient? So there's a lot more projects. So some of those points on the map are not launched yet, which is sort of like good enough to, to brag about. Um, there's a lot of little things that are out there. There are a lot of people that uh, if we help them or they helped each other, they would be able to, to create stronger projects. Uh, we're working to build a comprehensive knowledge base so that anyone who's interested in this can go to a site and learn how to do this, um, you know, what people have done in the past, uh, what people are doing right now, and, and sort of provide uh, templates for people, different, different, you know, see examples, someone worked with the public library here, okay, you know, someone worked with, you know, the local community advisory councils in this community. And so right now we sort of have a prototype of this site, which is guide.localwiki.org. The other thing we want to do is figure out how to network projects together, um, both technically and socially. So technically, meaning that in Chicago you have a bunch of different neighborhoods, like a lot, and you don't necessarily want a thing for Chicago um, because it's so daunting. and the policies you put in place might stifle people in local communities having the ability to control you know, the tone uh, of their local resource. And so we need to figure out a way that we can have all these different projects, but also allow people to make iPhone apps and stuff where you, know, you don't want to have a separate iPhone app for every single suburb of Cook County, right? So we, we want to figure out a way to have these things linked together technically. And we have some ideas. And socially, in that we want, and we're seeing this naturally happen, we want these projects to be able to help each other and um, do things like have a conference and that sort of, sort of stuff. The other big thing technically is mobile support. So right now you can use local wiki uh, on a phone uh, to view. Their, the fellow in Olympia has worked on a way to make it much nicer to view it on your phone. Um, there's still some things, though, about using a phone and contributing. It's a very different process. You don't have a keyboard. You don't, you know, you don't want to go in and edit a big thing on a phone. So this is something that we, we really want to focus on. Um, and we're also hoping that people will, with our API, build things on top of that, like these open government projects that happen where people will build these, these iPhone apps and so forth, because we don't we can't do everything, and this is an open source project. The other thing we want to encourage is lightweight contributions. Um, the idea right now is that it seems like you have to create a project. So like if I, you know, there's no particular project for this region of Chicago right here. But it would be great if I could, just knowing a few things, add a few pages. And then if someone wanted to create a project, that would be there. So we want to be able to allow this kind of lightweight contribution so that there's sort of this mesh that covers the whole world that people can contribute to. And then when community builds around these areas, pull those things off where the community themselves can, can run the projects. Um, we also need to remove the nerd barriers. And so hopefully making this mesh thing as sort of a hosted service rather than something that you install on a server would, would help with that. Um, so the other thing I wanted to, to touch on 
is this idea of the local market. So corporations increasingly are focusing on local communities as a market, um, focusing on commercial exchange. So where do you go to get businesses, you know, coupons, this sort of stuff, because it's really high value to them. They don't focus on like knowledge in communities, preserving knowledge in communities, engaging communities, because it doesn't, there's not money in it. And so what we're finding is a lot of these efforts, like AOL's patch.com, which they spend $100 million a year on, um, are losing terribly. Uh, and the reason why is because local communities are inherently local. People in local communities do things locally. And so there's an advantage for people that live in local communities. Uh, the people in the communities have knowledge. They have the knowledge about the community. And they have the power to do things, to organize, to get people to come together and work on projects. And so this is sort of the premise of what we want to do with a more distributed effort for local wiki. And we want to be able to provide tools that empower people to do things. So, so this is a cool picture of some people in Conway, Arkansas, who are calling themselves guerrilla archivists. Um, the people that are working on the Conway wiki, and they made a mascot logo thing, which I thought was kind of cool, and I would just sort of end with, end with that. So. Okay. Cyber democracy, collective intelligence, information freedom. This is a great example of those values. And so we really appreciate your contribution to the conference, and I know that there are many questions. Because we are streaming, uh, if you have a question, we want you to come up and uh, speak into the mic. So, questions. Okay, I'm Brooke from Fremont Public Library. I had um, some comments, and I was thinking about this from a, a kid's point of view, how you kind of mentioned that your passion started in college, and um, also the payphone project was really interesting, how no one thought that that could be interesting until they're all gone. So how can you encourage children in a community to contribute, and could, could you make a child safe wiki kind of to, you know, the drunk, bar streets of your community to um, block those pages? Or is there an age limit to join the wiki? Or how can we use it for kids, basically? Uh, so I, I'm not totally sure what the right approach would be for getting kids to start contributing. I think that kids, like everyone, have interests and in, in things they think are really cool. Uh, so I think just telling them they can talk about that. So if they're really into baseball and the local baseball team, I could talk about that. Um, I'm trying to think like, so when I was a kid, uh, I grew up around Albany, uh, not New York, in, in the Bay Area, and I would go to this hill, Albany Hill, and I'd build forts, and I was like really into Albany Hill. So I think if I was working on something like this, or if there's something like this when I was a kid, I'd probably want to talk about Albany Hill and like draw it and draw like the fort areas or something. And so I think stuff like that would, would work. Um, the, being safe for kids, I, I think it's, it's always a trade-off because you don't want to create a community that feels like there is censorship. Um, and I think that that long-term is probably more important than uh, making parents feel comfortable with their children using something. There have been debates, uh, at least on the Davis Wiki, about this, people using profanity. Um, Generally speaking, though, I think it is it is Davis Wiki's kids safe. I mean, there's like there's a page about prostitution, for instance, um, but it's it's not I mean, it's like what you'd read on Wikipedia. It's not where to find prostitution, um, and so I, I think it probably happens pretty naturally. Um, but I don't think it would be something to worry about. I guess in the context of a public library where you might be providing something in an outlet. Um, I, I think it would. I think it would probably be pretty safe in that sense. Uh, blocking particular pages based on age um, is not something we've done. Wikipedia actually uh, has been hammered with controversy over the past two years due to a report by Fox News that Wikipedia was harboring uh, uh, child pornography uh, because they have uh, uh, a few in their massive image database. They have a couple pictures of naked children. 
um, and it, it, maybe even in cartoon form, I'm not sure. But they're not pornographic pictures. Um, they're informational pictures, but you know, they're Fox News, they want to cause a, a big drama. And so the Wikipedia eventually, their board voted to um, create essentially a, like a warning type thing on a certain subset of pages, but it was very contentious there. Uh, and I think at the local level, it's, I mean, it would be hard to say like you can't access bar pages. Um, there's so many other places where people could find those sorts of things on the internet. So I think it's kind of just a general liability. And I suspect that existing tools that block content would, would block them similarly. Okay, I know that uh, there are some people here working on mobile wikis and I'm sure they have questions as well. Hi, I'm Fran, I'm at the Skokie Public Library. And I wanted to ask if you do have uh, a means of providing permissions. Now, we are tax supported. We also are a community of 70 different cultures, over 90 different languages. And some of the people who live in the neighborhood or their countries are at war or have been at war with one another over the years. And uh, people in our neighborhood feel comfortable about the librarians moderating the content. Uh, so that's why I'm asking if you have a means of doing that. Um, otherwise, it looks really great. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering how well it works with people uh, writing over uh, other other people's writing too, and, and what kind of feedback you get on that? Yeah, so this so. is a, it's a really interesting question, um, and it's so the the idea that anyone can come and contribute uh, kind of gives you the perception that it is a free for all, um, and in a way it is because anyone can contribute. Uh, but it, on the other hand, it is the Davis Wiki is hyper-moderated. It is probably one of the most moderated online communities. Uh, it's not moderated primarily by a set of administrators with special privileges. It's moderated by people that use the website that go on there and see bogus material or people you know, calling each other names and then they just take it off because anyone can take it off. And so that usually takes care of bogus stuff, libel, you know, bad things. Um, what occasionally there are arguments um, that either need to be um, neutral, people need to step in and help facilitate the argument, or sometimes pages need to be locked, uh, certain permissions need to be set for temporary, usually temporary periods of time. The software supports that. Uh, Community-wise though, um, we encourage people to not do that ahead of time to wait until there is a problem, because oftentimes people assume that, like one of the reasons why a lot of other projects don't succeed in getting a lot of contributions is because they're, they're locked down, there's lots of barriers. So as few barriers as possible and then set them up when there's a problem. So like the Davis Wiki front page, for instance, anyone can edit the front page, even though that seems like a really bad idea. And what we found was, yes, occasionally someone will come on there and delete it or put something stupid and it will be there for like sometimes like two minutes, five minutes, you know, and that's like hundreds of people that would see that. But what we also found was sometimes an administrator uh, is not around and something major happens in the community. Uh, a pepper spray thing happens or there's someone with a firearm running around. And the value of allowing the community to go on there and say, we're gonna put this, we're gonna put this in the front page and there's gonna be nothing else here because this is so important. And that's happened several times, that value outweigh the risk. And so there's, I think, a lot of examples like that. But yeah, there's totally permissions in there, so you can you can lock it down to your heart's content if you want, so. Thank you. I'm wondering if uh, your sense, especially on the map, those projects that you mapped out. Oh, my name is Brian Zeller from the University of Illinois. Um, I'm wondering if you can give a sense of how those groups are paying for it. How, where's the money coming from to sort of keep the projects going, especially for the ones that are important enough to really be launched? So we also uh, indicate what the money is for. 
you know, like you earlier, you said thirty thousand dollars, and I just wondered what how does that break out? Yeah. So we um, we don't advertise this on our front page because we don't have the resources to help everyone. We provide free hosting to groups that seem like they can pull it off, um, and so at least for the Triangle Project and the Denton Project, we have been hosting those projects um, on the local wiki servers. Um, a number of other projects we also host, uh, either because the people are, don't have the, the technical skills to install server software, or because uh, because it would just be easier for everyone all around. Uh, we do want to encourage people taking this on, because we think it's important for people to build skills um, and like the, the person in Olympia, if we had focused, if we focus on providing just a hosted platform, um, we lose out on making it easy to install, getting more open source contributors. So we're kind of going in that direction, and then we're going to add those those easy bits on um, the hosting expenses, uh, especially spread over a bunch of communities, are so minimal that it's almost not even worth considering um, to host Davis Wiki and. Uh, all of the other sites that we provide hosting to, um, the total cost per year is something like three grand. Um, and part of that is because we have uh, server space provided to us for free. Um, and part of that is just because it's not that expensive and we have software that's pretty efficient at, at hosting things. Uh, the money question, so the grant we got from the Knight Foundation uh, it's been spent, uh, it's basically earmarked just for software development. So the $30,000, we had a fundraiser uh, about a year and a half ago, and that was to allow us to have some money for community projects. So um, helping people in Triangle buy stickers, or having them not worry about the cost of purchasing stickers. Um, helping you know, with travel expenses, um, and then also we were considering hiring an outreach coordinator to coordinate with these projects, and we're still thinking about that. Another question? Yes. For those of you uh, who may be uh, watching this uh, from outside the United States, uh, three grand is $3,000. <laughs> Thank you for your excellent speech, and I have a question. Maybe it's a stupid question. And uh, I think uh, uh, your local wiki, some, func some functions are repeated to Google's function. For example, uh, wiki map. You can use Google map to do the same. Do you think uh, you do some of the repeated work? Yes, Thank we you. do. <laughs> um, so the, we, we do. And the, the reason why is because um, sometimes, so some of, some of, we build as an open source, so we're an open source project and we are a nonprofit and we want to exist in an ecosystem of free culture, open content, open source software. Um, some elements of that ecosystem are there already. So the mapping base layer that we display is provided by something called OpenStreetMap which is essentially the Wikipedia of just base math. Um, that took about seven years to, or six years to get to the point where it is now, where major services such as Foursquare uh, are, and Apple are going to stop using Google Maps and begin using OpenStreetMap because it's free and there's no licensing restrictions and they can do whatever they want with it. It takes a while for the open source stuff to catch up, but once it gets caught up, everyone is better off and that becomes the new standard. With respect to some of the functionality we had to do, for instance, building the editing interface, you might say, well, isn't that something like you could do just with Google Docs? And that's also true, um, but there is value in creating an open version of these things that is then free and that we can, you know, when, when the grant money runs out, right, if we don't line anything else up, no matter what happens, the software is completely free and open source. The content on the projects is freely licensed. So it's an insurance policy for everyone who, who donates their time to make successful projects. And I, I think that that's the most important part. Originally, on Davis Wiki, we had like a basic Google Maps functionality. Um, 
we, the other cool thing about not using Google Maps in particular is that you can totally customize it. So we can make the colors match and everything, which is really important for us. Well, let's give Philip a round of applause. <laughs> this isn't the last time that uh, you can uh, get into the details of the local wiki because after our break, in the white oak room, which is uh, as soon as you leave this room immediately to the right, uh, we will have a workshop going into hands-on, more detail, taking a hard look at specific uh, things that he mentioned, but we'll be able to, uh, uh, to go into some detail. But also, in this room, uh, this session, if you're looking at your program, the session is uh, Tech in the Hood. And uh, this will be a very exciting uh, project, uh, looking at uh, uh, direct projects in the inner city dealing with the digital divide. And then finally, we have a very exciting program in the uh, Dearborn Room, which is really speaking to how this technology is global. And so we're having a session called East Chicago as Global Network, China and Chinese Chicago. Uh, and so this is a very important session because we're having, uh, not only are we having people who are based in the United States, but we're having people who are actually based in uh, Beijing, China, who are visiting us. And so this is a very interesting opportunity to have that kind of global discourse. So in this room, uh, we're having Tech in the Hood in the White Oak Room, uh, more on the local wiki, and then in the Dearborn Room, we're having this session on China and Chinese Chicago. So thank you very much. Have a cup of coffee, network, and then regroup in our sessions. Thank you.